The history makers, an archive of 5,000 African Americans who made a difference. There's something everyone can appreciate in these stories. It's about education. It's about our legacy. It's also about telling our story and about correcting American history before it's too late. My grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, my father, all those things have been very important to me. And I think it helps to make me a very special people because I'm proud of the stock out of which I have come. I'll call them the, the Z generation, generations, because it's a family of generations. Uh, African Americans who were born essentially in the, in the late 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and, and maybe, maybe just a few into the 50s, but basically those, those uh, basically those folks within those four generations. And they, they bear a distinction and uh, they hold cards that no other generations before them or no other generations after them will be able to claim. And those three points are that they, among those generations, are the last living links to slavery. It's, they are the first groups of, of individuals, of African Americans, to have matured during, uh, at a time when they can appreciate the, uh, the difficulties in a segregated society and, uh, and the, the, uh, the promise in, uh, uh, that is held in a desegregated society. I mean, they're old enough to, to know the difference. It was remarkable kind of experience. There was also a time when Langston Hughes and County Helen and John Hillens and all of them were very much a part of life. And Paul Robeson, of course. Oh. Harlem was just a marvelous place for me to grow up. And uh, he read the newspaper. But of course, as a race man, he did not trust any white publications. So he read the Philadelphia Pittsburgh Courier, the, uh, the Philadelphia Tribune, uh, the Afro-American, uh, and then he would read the Daily News and the Inquirer and the Bulletin. But my father, in the course of one week, probably read six or seven newspapers, different newspapers. You have to understand that the white newspapers didn't, <laughs> didn't run anything about race, they didn't run anything about death. We're talking about black people now, unless they got in trouble. And they, they, you, you will assume that we didn't uh, get married because there was nothing about weddings. Uh, there was nothing really uh, about black people that you could be proud of. And so that, that was a need for, for, for that information. And, uh, and to put it all in one place was a good thing. I could not, regardless of how much money I had in my pocket, see, what really made me upset was when we got into a, a, a town or city, our names on the marquee, people are waiting, we're the main attraction, we, we can't eat in the restaurant, we can't live in the hotel, and uh, when we get into gymnasium, we just star. But when we get off, the, when the game's over, we got to get out of town quick. You know, and I just got tired of that. And one couldn't be a close student of these affairs without realizing that something was something major was happening and about to happen. Hundreds and thousands of people leaving Union Station, leaving the train. We saw all type of people, just a sea of people, just, you know, it was like the number that no person could number. The question that was thrown to us by the uh, Civil Rights Revolution was, what do we mean by integration? You know, freedom from what, but also freedom for what? How much of America do we want? 
How much of America are we willing to be accepted into? Are we willing to give up everything black just to be American? Or, or where do we stop? And what, uh, what is the nature of the power that we need, not only to be free, but to be equal? Um, you know, I think that the Civil Rights Movement probably had the biggest influence on my life, the participants in that. Not just Dr. King or Malcolm X, but Bob Moses and Fannie Lou Hamer and uh, Rosa Parks and you know, E.J. Nixon and uh, you know, all the characters uh, that made up that process, uh, I think, are uh, the folks who ended up having the biggest impact on my life. Their story. Not only was I the first black judge of a court of record in Shelby County, I was actually the first black judge of a court of record in the entire South. During the interview process, someone at one of the bar associations said, well now, if you become a judge and you are confirmed, I mean, you'll be the first black woman and you're only 35 years old. How will you handle that? And I said, well, I've been a black woman all my life and I've learned to handle that. It's things like that that make you understand about struggle and history and purpose and character and, you know, and success. All those, you, all in a split second. Art is uh, is us. Those of us who are wise enough to recognize it, see it, and know it, not push it in a part of our lives, but accept it. I think art is the great master. We need art to tell us why life is important, and also to confer that importance on life. Art tells us what's worth dying for, not science. And that's why art and things of the spirit and cre creativity are absolutely important. Remind us that we are our libraries, but we're going to still tell the story. We will continue to tell the story. There's stories uh, uh, tell me what ordinary people can do in extraordinary times. Uh, and also uh, remind me of what uh, this country at its best can be. Uh, and, and so I think uh, they have done more to shape the trajectory of my career more than anybody else, even though I, most of them I have never met personally. It's very important for people to have a sense of place, you know, a sense of belonging, a sense of history of where they came from. People go from Harriet Tubman to Martin Luther King, you know, and the same names being mentioned over and over again. And yet, I would talk to people and I would hear these wonderful stories about their families or people that influenced them, names that were not in the public venue as much. We actually interview people for two, two and a half hours, and uh, we ask them to bring a photograph of themselves and we have them marry them. We have a very strong educational initiative to really bring this history to life and for people to see uh, these stories, you know, and these people. But our goal is really to record this information. We say that this is America's missing stories, that uh, American history really won't be complete without this information.